In today's video, we're doing a bit of a geeky deep dive and answering the burning question. What is the best DSLR microphone for under $50? I was told that if you buy cheap, you buy twice. But is that true? And do you really have to reach to those dizzy high price tags to get the best quality? Well, that question is kind of what we've built this whole channel around. And today we're going super meta with it. So strap in and get comfy as I get my audio geek on and compare five different DSLR microphones from different brands and price points to see once and for all, which is the best bang for buck audio. All the microphones we're looking at share some key similarities and for the sake of relative fairness we'll be doing all the recording in the manner that they were designed via the three and a half mil preamp on a camera. The specs are at least on paper all roughly the same too. The five microphones are all cardioid condensers that are all cold shoe mounted to a camera via a suspension mount. Also for the sake of fairness I won't be applying any form of post-production on the audio captured, despite the fact that it will genuinely hurt me. I cannot stand untreated dialogue. So anyway, without further ado, let's just get stuck in. <laughs> like a good old fashioned Brit, let's get stuck in. I don't know why the f I wrote that. <laughs> First up, we have the Ultimax or Plocher DSLR mic. I'm not even sure where this one came from. I definitely can't remember buying it. So my bet is on Pete bargain hunting again. Having looked around for myself, I can find these on Amazon for around $20, sometimes even less. So by far, this is the cheapest of the whole bunch. When testing this and writing these notes, I was trying to come up with some good points for it, but in truth, it's just all round nasty. The build quality is awful, the noise level is horrendous, and it produces a really unpleasant EQ or tone. I could probably rescue this in post, but that defeats the point of this test and defies who this microphone would be made for. The only redeeming feature in truth is the fact that it has a switchable polar pattern going from a hypercardioid or 90 degree pickup to a standard cardioid or 120 degree pickup pattern. But in testing, I've actually found this switch to be entirely ineffective. In short, I'm pretty sure that it does nothing at all. The Hafoko Minigun. This wins the contest for the most awesome name on a microphone ever. But beyond the Schwarzenegger-esque naming convention, there's very little else to like. Pete would argue that the $20 price tag gives it a place, but in truth, the difference between this and something that costs, say, $10 more is night and day. The all plastic design really lets it down. Even the shock mount is of a poor quality. In fact, the shock mount is actually just a good analogy for the whole setup of the minigun. This does nothing to actually offer any real shock protection. To be fair, you know you're in trouble when the manufacturer can't actually discern the difference between omnidirectional and unidirectional, as Hafoko claimed this microphone is both. And to add more comedy to that, it's neither. Now, I know I'm an audio snob, so I'm bound to be harsh on these cheaper offerings, but I just know that you can do better with budget microphones, and this is just all round disappointing. The Andy Scene ACM1 coming in at a cool $30 is the first microphone here that I would seriously consider as an option. Of course, it does have its shortcomings and pro mic this is definitely not, but for me, this makes a lot more sense as an entry level microphone. For sure, this is the first mic in this list that actually gives a noticeable worthwhile improvement over the built-in microphone in your camera. That's not to say that it's great or even perfect, but it's definitely the first one in this list that justifies the expense and in a controlled indoor environment actually offers some real bang for your buck. 
It is definitely lacking on the build quality front. I'm not sure about its durability over the longer term. Also, I'd be very wary of how susceptible this microphone would be to interference, but for $30, it actually gets my attention. The CM500 from KNF Concept sits firmly in the same camp as the Andy Scene M1, coming in at that same $30 price point. And like the Andy Scene, it offers a notable improvement in terms of quality and in tone than that of your built in microphone. This is leaps and bounds ahead of the cheapest options in this list, but that's not to say that it's problem free. It's not got the best build quality, but I suppose that is to be expected at this price point. Also, there's no suspension mounting, so you are likely gonna pick up some noticeable handling noise with this microphone. The CM500 does house one really interesting and crucial feature, a plus 10 dB gain booster. This is combined with a high pass filter, which makes it perfect for recording voice, which let's face it, is really what these microphones are for. It's a shame the filter isn't independent from that gain switch, but then again, this mic is just $30. Last, but by no means least, is the most expensive offering we have. Smack bang on the $50 mark, the Rode VideoMic Go. I say $50, but in truth, it could be often found far cheaper if you're willing to stalk them on Amazon. We picked ours up for just 30. It pains me to say it, but the obvious truth shines through when you get to using this microphone. The most expensive and well-known branded version is the best. It's just true. The build quality is superb. It has a fantastic shock mount and solid audio quality. If 50 pounds or dollars is your budget, just get this microphone, but, and like Pete, this is a really big butt. I wouldn't say that it's worlds apart quality-wise from the Andy Scene or the KNF microphones. It is better for sure, but not twice as good, so you shouldn't be disappointed if all you can afford are those lesser offerings. So that brings me right back round to the start in a nice, neat, perfect circle. The most expensive offering here is the best and will likely last you far longer in terms of raw build quality. So yes, if you buy cheap, you'll buy twice, but what cheap is, is totally relative. In terms of outright bang for your buck, look to the KNF CM500 or the Andy Scene ACM1. For their price point, these mics have truly surprised me. And if they're out of reach still, we'll just hold on and save a little longer because anything less than these just isn't worth your time or money. I promise you, you will be disappointed and just end up buying twice. So for some more information on these microphones, there is of course some links below. And whilst you're down there, why not consider subscribing to our channel? That's been my grab and go review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, one final thing before we go. Yes, you saw it in the title, so you obviously watched to the end for this. There is a giveaway. I've got Pete's anti-scene ACM1, right, and I'm giving- this is ridiculous. No, you're not giving it away. I'm giving Pete's microphone away. He bought it. I give it to you. Click below to enter. Everyone's, well, not everyone's a winner, just one person a week, because we've only got one. Well, someone's uh, going to be a winner, and it's not me, because somehow always my stuff gets given away. So if you want to win Pete's Andy Scene M1, here's the box, here's the microphone. It's actually this one that I'm holding. I promise it won't have COVID. Then click on the link below, and you could win. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I actually don't care if they don't come back again. If I can keep the microphone. You can't keep the microphone. Right, great.